Hello. My name is Nicole Johnson. I'm a student here at Gallatin studying ethics, management, and production in the arts. And in addition to my studies here at the university, I work with a lot of middle school kids in different programs around the city. And in spending time with them, I often think about my own middle school experience. And I remember having a lot of nicknames. I had nicknames like Nikki J and Giovanna. I had Nikki, like, nicknames like Pooh Bear and Hopper. And I also had nicknames like Oreo and Wonder Bread. Those last two were not my choice nicknames, <laughs> but in fact, that's what I went by. I started off as Nikki J, which seemed to be a commentary on my name, and then I turned into Oreo, which seemed to be a commentary on my race. Well, looking back on it now, I realize that the Oreo nickname isn't just about race. In fact, in using the nickname, it serves as a prime example of misunderstanding the double consciousness. The double consciousness is a term originally coined by W.E.B. Du Bois that refers to the psychological challenge of reconciling an African heritage with a European upbringing and education. Du Bois claims that African Americans struggle with a multifaceted conception of self, a double consciousness. And in this, they're continuously trying to reconcile the two cultures that comprise their one identity. So it's a very peculiar sensation to have a double consciousness, this sense of always looking at oneself through the eyes of another. Du Bois claims that one ever feels his Tunis, an American, a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals in one dark body. George Lakoff is a cognitive linguist that claims that we are significantly influenced by the metaphors that we use to describe complex phenomena like the double consciousness. Lakoff says we are not only significantly influenced by these metaphors, but in fact they regulate our realities and eventually they become our societal norms. So the repeated exposure to something like an American, a Negro, one ever feels his Tunis, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings can have a very profound effect on the African American of the 20th century. It had a very profound effect on the 21st century African American as well. But today we use a variety of other metaphors to describe the double consciousness such as the Oreo, the Wonder Bread, or you're acting white. So Lakoff would argue that Du Bois successfully used metaphors to convince this nation of African Americans that we were in fact experiencing an identity crisis. Now he was speaking during the 20th century, but we still adhere to it as if it was a 21st century ideal. I believe that's a problem. And that is why I propose we initiate the rebirth of the double consciousness. So today, for the past several decades, we've been working very diligently to make sure our kids stay in school. And obviously, the evidence shows that our efforts are working. The dropout rates are decreasing, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm very excited about this improvement, but we shouldn't get swept away in the success. We should also take a look at what these students are doing after high school. So in 2011, 37.1% of African Americans between the ages of 18 and 24 enrolled in a two or a four year program. 34.8% of Latinos between the ages of 18 and 24 also enrolled in a two or a four year program. Now that's great. It's great that they enrolled, but what happened to the other 63% of African Americans? What happened to the other 65% of Latinos? Where are they? What are they doing? Are they achieving some sort of sustainability? Without higher level education, is that even possible? I do think we need to go back and rethink our educational goals because of course we want to make sure that these students are staying in school, of course, high school is great. But we also want to make sure that they're continuing on some sort of educational path after high school because the way that the job market is looking right now, it's very difficult to even be considered without some sort of degree. And I'm not talking about a degree from NYU or Harvard or Princeton. I'm talking about a degree from a local community college, some sort of associate's degree to put on your resume so you can be considered by employers. Now there's a reason why these students aren't enrolling in education. There's plenty of reasons why these students aren't enrolling in education, but I'm sure that one of these reasons has something to do with the widespread misunderstanding of what education is in relationship to the double consciousness. See, in the 20th century, Du Bois argued 
that African Americans were constantly aware of how much their own sense of identity and cultures and values conflicted with the cultures and values imposed upon them by white America or the white American institution. And it is this that I want to move the conversation forward, recognizing that there is this prevailing misunderstanding about what education is. Now, this is seen in both African American students and minority students. It's also seen in educational scholars of all different backgrounds. There's this prevailing understanding that the things that we are learning in our education system are white cultural values and white cultural capital. So on the academic front, I've often heard the word white used to describe education. The whiteness of education is failing our, our minority youth. And then on the student level, you often hear minority students saying that if I engage in education or any more education, I'm abandoning my culture in a way that's not really for us. See, by embodying the double consciousness, we conclude that there are two separate cultures, black culture and white culture, hence the Oreo. And so in embodying this double consciousness and realizing that there is a black and a white, we somehow get confused. And so when you think of black culture, you don't typically think of education, but why so? I mean, maybe because the institutions that we're learning in right now um, were originally created by white Americans for white Americans, and we can't really do anything about that historical choice to create institutions for white Americans without minorities in mind. We can't do anything about that. But we can go back and think about what it is that we actually consider black culture. So when you think of black culture, you think of dancing, singing, food, athletics. Well, I'm starting to think a little bit differently about black culture, or some of the characteristics at least. For example, the collard greens that we eat, or the chitlins that we eat, those were foods that we used or that we ate because they were given to us as slaves on the plantations. The slang that we use that are as typically understood as African American conversation is a product of not being able to read and write. Also during slavery, many of the characteristics of what we consider black culture today can be considered the culture of the oppressed. But we hold on to it as if it's our intrinsic nature. And I ran into this conflict, this inner conflict, when I was in middle school a lot, as if when I invested in education, I was somehow abandoning my culture. Or if I spoke in complete sentences, I was somehow white. Now, what would Du Bois say about this moment in time where African American students or minority students are so confused? Would he say that we're misunderstanding the double consciousness? Or maybe he would say that the theory was most useful for African Americans of the, of the 20th century. Or maybe he would say that we as a community of 21st century African Americans and minority students are taking the language much too far and maybe using it incorrectly to the point where we believe that there are two warring bodies, one of them has education, the other one doesn't, and we have to choose for the sake of our progress as minorities, especially concerning this problem of, of education, we have to make sure we're cautious of the words that we use to describe education. We have to eliminate the Du Bois identity crisis, and we have to baptize the double consciousness. That means a washing away of all the negativity associated with possessing cultural capital that is different from the typical American institution. So how do we do this? Well, in addition to addressing the structural factors, we have to go back and hit the cultural issues. That means we have to speak to young girls and boys that may be suffering from this identity crisis and make sure that they understand that education is an American tool for an American advancement and that it is in place for them right now so that they may be able to gain some sort of sustainability. Education is not white. Education is not black. Education is an American tool. So I am founder and creative director of Giovanna Productions. Giovanna Productions is a nonprofit production company that raises funds and awareness for a variety of social issues. Um, in this uh, nonprofit, I encourage my youth to create socially responsible artistic pieces for a variety of social causes. In addition to our artistic efforts, we are administering a new educational program entitled the Vana Educational Membership. Now, the Vana Ed Membership is created on five very simple principles. First, create strong, long-lasting relationships between younger students in the organization, older students in the organization, and teachers. 
to create a very culturally diverse environment in which students of all cultural backgrounds can condition one another. Three, make sure that the environment is comfortable, informal, personal, and loving. Four, invite community members into the space. These community members should be proficient in different skill sets and work in different industries and have them come and participate in our daily activities. And five, make sure that everybody in the organization understands that education is the ability to meet life situations. Now, we will be preparing our students for their times in their academic semester, where they'll be engaging in studies of science and math and reading. But we also understand that in those same semesters, they're going to be engaging in different uh, social issues, such as peer pressure. Some of them are going to be working on their college application. Some of them are going to be working for job interviews. Others will be doing things with time management and scheduling. Others are going to be working out conflicts, miscommunications, fights in school, real life situations. Our schools barely address these topics, but the Vana Educational Membership is designed to do just that. And one of the central goals of the Vana Ed membership is to baptize the double consciousness of minority youth so that they may be able to better navigate the complexities of their educational endeavors. And the best part about this baptism is they will arise from it understanding that the double consciousness still exists, but realizing that they don't have to be victims of it anymore. So instead of feeling cursed by their double consciousness, they'll feel that it's a blessing that makes them a more marketable and useful citizen who has the confidence and the potential to achieve his or her wildest dreams. Now, so do we have to continue to use this language of fracture in which we separate things, literally the black and the white inside of me? Instead of reifying Du Bois's double consciousness theory, one ever feels his two-ness, an American, a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, why don't we reframe? Why don't we reframe the double consciousness? Why don't we say one ever feels her wholeness, an American or an African American? One soul, possibly many thoughts. Why don't we just change the words? Thanks.